Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I posted an update. I feel I owe you one. And this is kind of a major update. Sorry. Yeah, bought the RV. I had big plans for it. And unfortunately, plans change. I'm going to get out of this wind a little bit if I can. So I bought this thing. I brought it home. And two days later, I was laid off of my job. Life, you know, life sucks sometimes. It's not a big deal, but it did change my plans. My plan was to take this thing and I was gonna go on the road and I would work from the office that I would build inside. I could travel the country, go to racetracks, just have a great time. Unfortunately, losing the job where I could work remotely changed that a lot. Just couldn't do it anymore. And the other aspect of that is that I have a uh, elderly parent that I care for. And I realized that I couldn't leave for two weeks or a month at a time and just leave her on her own. So, um, yeah, but it's life. So I did put a bunch of work into this thing. As I said, I lost my job two days after I brought this home, but I had severance. So I had a month to work on this thing. I got a ton done. And I'm gonna try to give you a quick recap video here just to show you everything that's happened and where the RV stands today. The uh, buyer is going to swing by, pick it up, hopefully in a couple of hours, and then it'll be uh, his vehicle, and I hope he continue, can continue to have fun with it. All right, I'm going to reverse the camera, and I'll take you on the tour. We're at the back of the RV, and I put this sign up for, just for laughs, but it turns out it's really useful. People... Um, People used to just hang out behind this RV and they would wait for the thing to speed up like they were expecting it to suddenly do 70 miles an hour. And this uh, this has changed the way people drive around it. They actually just get on around and get on down the road and leave me to tootle along in the right lane, which makes everybody happy. So that was great. Also at the top, you can see I've added a uh, backup camera. It's just a cheapo that I got from Amazon for about 15 bucks, but it worked beautifully. The stereo in this thing was already rigged up to take a backup camera, so I just had to wire it in. The first thing I did on the vehicle was a bunch of work at the back end. It used to run kind of hot, so I, uh, I took the radiator and the intercooler out, and they were filthy. Just uh, packed with a little bit of uh, oil that any diesel will generate, and then all that oil had attracted dirt, and it was just like a, a dryer a dryer screen that had never been cleaned out. It was vile. Took them all out, uh, which is not an easy job because that is a copper radiator. It's heavy. Uh, got it out of here. Got it uh, degreased, pressure washed. It's built sturdily enough that you can pressure wash it without damaging anything. And then reinstalled it and it's running a lot cooler and happier now. So that's great. While I was in here, I uh, uh, with all the radiators out of the way, I was able to access um, the rear of the engine. But of course, it would be the front of the engine if this was a Dodge Ram. And this is, by the way, the Cummins motor that goes in a Dodge Ram. So, got to uh, got that timing cover off, uh, went in and uh, got the killer dowel pin taken care of. If you don't know about that one, it's, uh, it's just a metal dowel about a quarter inch in diameter and it can back out of its hole and then fall into the timing gears and that basically murders your engine. So it's the one fatal flaw of these engines, but it's easy to address. You get in there and you can uh, fabricate a little simple cover that keeps that pin from moving out. That's been done and I resealed the timing cover at the same time. That took care of my major oil leak. Let's close that up. I went through these tail lights. A lot of them were not working. Uh, some of the sockets had to be rebuilt. Not a big deal. Just attention to detail. I fixed an issue with the electrical that was causing these lights to be very dim. On my first drive, I almost took somebody out because you couldn't see my turn signals. These are LED lights, but they were only getting 8 volts. So, fixed that. We're at the generator bay here. And it doesn't really look like much, but the big change in here is that I have turned this generator around. When I got it, uh, this side was over there, that side was in the back, and so on. And it was done that way because the exhaust comes out that side. With the generator rotated, the exhaust would shoot out towards me, and actually would blow through this hole in the door right here. 
Now that worked, but it meant that you couldn't access the choke, which would be all the way in the back, and all of these plugs were on the side, and also very hard to reach. I like my system better. I turned it around, but to do that I had to make a remote mount exhaust. So I, del I deleted the original muffler and made an adapter to go to some flex pipe, and then that goes around to this Honda Grom muffler, which is fixed in place. There was a YouTube thread somewhere about quieting generators, and someone said that the Grom muffler would get the job done. Um, I'm here to tell you that at least on this type of generator, which is a Predator 8750, the Grom muffler does absolutely nothing. Uh, the noise is unchanged from the stock muffler. What it does do, of course, is it lets me direct the exhaust down and below the RV rather than letting it build up in the generator bay. The other thing I did is this white cord which leads around to these fans back here. Now these fans I bought at Target. Um, it's just a little window circulation fan and it's got a mechanical switch on it so it's always on. When the generator's running, it's running. And what you can't tell is that behind there is sort of a tunnel that leads to the other side of the RV. So when the fans are running, they're pulling air and blowing fresh cool air into the generator bay. That keeps the generator cool and happy. Now, when you're parked, of course, the generator comes out on the slide out. But when you're in traffic, it's very easy for that whole bay to get too hot. Not a problem anymore. Since I moved the exhaust up here, it brought it very close to this big black hose, which is the uh, fuel filler. Um, I replaced that. The old one, the old one had kind of a belly um, about there, and uh, that belly had a hole in it, and it had been patched by somebody. Uh, well, they took another hose and they caulked it into place and wrapped it with zip ties, and it was terrible. It was just terrible. It dripped diesel. So I did not like having fuel dripping uh, about a foot away from my hot generator exhaust because. If I'm going down the highway and the wind is coming that way, it's going to blow diesel at the exhaust pipe. I just thought that was dangerous, so I fixed it. Right. Moving on around to the front here. This uh, panel, I won't take it off right now because it takes two hands, but um, it had a uh, sort of a hinge on it to bring it forward and up, and that hinge was 30 years old didn't work worth a damn. I just took it off. It actually turns out it's a whole lot easier just to undo these two locks and just take the whole panel off. Works a whole lot better. Uh, Replace the house batteries. The old ones didn't survive the winter storm here in Texas. And then I also, I put in this 200 amp fuse, which I think you can see there. Um, so everything coming off the house batteries goes through that fuse. Now that's a heavy duty fuse, it's normally used for you know, high end car audio. Uh, what it's doing here is just protecting all of these power leads which go all over the RV and before I made this modification they had no protection against short circuits. Uh, a short would have burned the whole RV down. Now a short will just pop that fuse and I've got plenty of spares for those. So it's a whole lot safer. Uh, the motorcycle rack is unchanged. Coming around to this side, let's see if this is open. Probably not. Nope. Well, what else have we done? Let's go inside. We've got a new air conditioner up front. This one is much nicer than the old one. The old one was kind of worn out. In fact, we took this old front one, we moved it to the rear, and then we got rid of the old rear one because it was really worn out. But uh, I'd recommend the, the next owner go ahead and change out the rear one as well. Did some work on the water tank. Uh, the water tank is actually right below this sofa. There, you can see it now. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but it's clean on the inside. There, that green and white hose is the filler hose. You notice it's at the back. And the filler on the side of the RV is only a few inches above the tank, so when you accelerate, all the water in the tank would just puke out, out of the filler. Uh, fix that by getting a really good sealing cap on the filler. Basically a, a cork from a homebrew supply place. Uh, like a good quality rubber cork. That works. Uh, did some work on the water heater. Specifically I discovered that the water heater switch doesn't do anything anymore. It used to have a tank water heater and now it's a tankless. 
and the tankless water heater just has a couple of C-sized batteries to, to run its electronics. Um, didn't have to do much with the pump other than uh, under the kitchen's counter here. I, uh, well, let me pull this out so you can see. Uh, this used to be uh, just open and the pump was down there and you couldn't really use this for storage. Now you can. I labeled it so you know exactly what you need to open up to get to the pump. And uh, yeah, that's better. I went under here, I resealed the drains. I also recalked the sink to the countertop, so uh, that's in good shape now. The RV has these nifty under cabinet lights, and when I got it, they didn't work. The problem was this right here, that's, uh, that used to be a switch, a really cheap switch that just stopped working. So I took each of these down, disassembled them, and I unsoldered the switch from the circuit board and replaced it with a little wire jumper. So then the uh, light was on all the time, and then I put a proper switch in right here. Don't ask me why that hole is there. You know, this It's an old RV. Holes are drilled in random places for no reason at all. But I, you can see I used Wagos to connect the lights to the switch. If you've never used Wago wire nuts, I recommend checking them out. They're fabulous. Did some work up front. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, I mentioned the backup camera. Well, really just a rear view camera. Let me pull out the keys here. Alright, power up the stereo. There we go. And uh, just wired in a switch. This is a two pole switch. Uh, so one side of it is switching the wire that tells the backup camera that you, or that tells the stereo that you're in reverse. The other side switches power to the backup camera. So turning it off shuts the camera off, which is great because you're not you're not wearing out the electronics. Not that they really wear out, but I figure if they're not being used, they will last longer. And turn it on, and there's your rear view. You can see I'm backed up to a loading dock door right now. But uh, going down the highway, you have a great view of what's going on behind you. Uh, between that and the, and the two blind spot mirrors, uh, you can tell exactly what's going on, and the camera lets you see whether somebody is even with your bumper or not. Uh, because with the mirrors, somebody can be visible back there. Like, you know, you can see, you can see all the way back behind the RV, but boy, it's tiny, and you lose all sense of distance. So you see a vehicle back there in the lane you want to get into, and then if you look and see them on the camera screen, well, if they're there, you know you're not going to hit them when you change lanes. I also fixed the air ride system. It actually wasn't in bad shape. There was just a, a hole in one of the lines that needed to be patched. So, not a big deal. Uh, did some work on the uh, st stabilizing legs. It's a 30-year-old system, still works great. Uh, one little glitch, which is that the back left leg, it will come up, but the minute you release it, it drops like a millimeter, just enough to engage the switch. Uh, somebody would have to go in there and uh, they'd have to go in and work on the hydraulics to make that work okay. Um, ultimately, it it's good enough. It's See, it stays and then it slowly leaks down. Now, after about two weeks, I'll come back and I'll find that the leg has dropped a couple of inches. But it's it's a slow issue and it's for a future person to take care of. Alright, what else we got? Everything up front, this all works well. It's been fine ever since I did the uh, circuit board rebuild. There, sorry, the fuse, the fuse box rebuild, which you saw in a previous video. Uh, I've got my remote control for the air conditioner, which is great. I can go down the highway and adjust the temperature from right here. Uh, I've still got these fans. They worked, never needed to change them. Uh, the, I replaced the original TV, it was dead. This new one I got for free, it works. So, it's, working is better than not working. It's not exactly high-end media, but, you know, it's good enough. I would just plug a laptop into it and watch movies off of that. Did some work on the furnace. Uh, the furnace got all new ducting. 
because the old stuff was uh, full of mouse house and very degraded. It would just crumble. So pulled the furnace out. Completely took the furnace apart. It turns out they're quite simple. Um, the main thing was to inspect the heat exchanger, make sure it had no holes in it. If you have a hole in the heat exchanger, you can pump carbon monoxide into the cabin, and then you just go to sleep and you never wake up. Now, I do have a carbon monoxide monitor. It's a dead center on your screen there, and it makes a hell of a noise, so we're covered there for safety, but I wanted to inspect the furnace too. Uh, while I was in there, I fixed a problem that was keeping the furnace from lighting, which is that the igniter electrode, which is just sort of a long metal finger, it had worn down and it had lost some of its length, so the gap was too big. It couldn't spark. You know, it's like a $20 part to replace. Put that in, the furnace worked great. Um, a lot of little minor details. Uh, replaced a missing knob on the oven with something from Amazon. Not an exact fit, but close enough. And replaced these little grommets, which keep the, uh, I don't know what you call this, but kept them from rattling around. The fridge, uh, fridge is just fine, doesn't need anything. Working well, it's actually quite cold right now. Uh, somebody pointed out that the Texas flag was hung backwards, so I fixed that. The, when you're hanging vertically, the white goes on the left. I discovered why the uh, bar has a square cup holder. That's for your Jack Daniels bottle. No other work was done in here. In the bedroom, around each window, I put up four of these little, uh, oh, I forget what you call these, but they're basically a expanding uh, blind nut and a screw. And uh, there's one at each corner of each window, and I use them to hang these, uh, these sunshades that I made. And these are basically just bubble wrap with foil on them. Uh, I cut them to be exact fits, I labeled them, and I put grommets to match the holes, and uh, I can now cover each window, and in the summer that makes a huge difference in comfort. Other major issues were just plumbing things. Nothing too complicated. Uh, the tub, tub was good, except uh, I squirted expanding foam under it, because um, it was very squishy, and put some expanding foam under it, firmed it right up. Still not perfect, but uh, I don't feel like using thin set mortar in here, it's too much weight. It's good enough. Uh, replaced the drain on the sink, which was uh, old and leaky. Did some, fixed some leaks in the under sink plumbing as well. Uh, there were also leaks in the plumbing under the kitchen sink, and that one was uh, kind of ridiculous. Previous owner must have been aware of the leaks because his solution to solve them was to, uh, to take rags and zip tie them around the leaks so that the rags would soak up the water. It's, uh, that's, that's not okay. Um, I fixed it properly by actually fixing the leak. Going back into the bedroom, there's not really much to tell here. Um, just got some new bedding on it. Um, I took the cover off of the air conditioner and I painted it white. I think it just looks a lot nicer. I also put in air filters. I don't know if that's visible. Turn the flash on. There you go. And they're actually kind of working. I just bought a home air filter and I cut it down to size and I made some uh, wire retainers on the back side. It's not perfect, but it you can see it definitely is absorbing some dust out of the air. So that's good enough until this thing gets replaced because all the modern ones do have changeable filters. That's about it for the work. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, you consider the hours it takes to do each job just to figure out how to do it, get parts, install them, etc. It, yeah, it took, a, it took a good month of days. Anyway, that's the end of this. I, uh, I'm going to move on to greater and better things. Hopefully a uh, fellow will show up with money today and I will hand him the title and uh, this RV can move on to a new life and I can move on to new projects. I'm going to keep on working on the uh, CMC Mustang. Uh, I should have an update on you. I should have an update for you on that pretty soon. And uh, I've got some other projects in the works. Well, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.